it's a crew refresher for the S15 for, for men who've not been here for a while. So just run through the quick the cab controls real quick, start with the manifold. So up here you've got the wear shaft lock on the manifold isolator, steam heat valve, and this valve's here for the lubricator for the warmer. Obviously we don't use that in service on a regular basis. That's usually just for the winter and we don't use that unless the problem with the wear shaft lock that stays on. Uh, moving around here, brake ejector isolating handle, that's turned on at the start of the shift and turned off at the last part of the shift unless there's other times where the duty fitter may require you to turn it off. Small ejector, brake, train brake handle, trigger pipe, for large ejector push all the way forward. Up here in the corner, the atomizer isolating valve, again turned on at the very start of the shift and turned off right at the end of the shift once the last move's done. Down here on the left you have the blower, speedo, TBWS and AWS. Reverser self-explanatory. This is the wear shaft lock itself, that's off as you can see it there. Pull it round to that position and it's on. It won't, the reverser won't move with this on, it totally locks the wear shaft. Down here we've got the cylinder drain cocks, self-explanatory. Other little quirks and curiosities with this engine, the pressure gauge works off the steam feed on the right hand side gauge glass. So if you have to turn this gauge glass off for any reason, you also lose your pressure gauge. Uh, there's a sands, front sands only on this, gravity sands. Again, push forward for sand, back for off. Two dampers, back damper, front damper, and in here you have the main isolating switch for all electronic gear. Again, this is turned on by the duty fitter, it should be tagged unless there's anything untowards happening throughout the shift. Over here, temporary isolating switch. This is used if you need to top and tail into Whitby or on the back of a train or need to temporary isolate for whatever reason. Just quickly the wood to show you. It's there, left for normal, right for isolate. When that's turned on, you'll get a yellow warning light on the indicator panel on the other side of the car. Over here, handbrake. Uh, right hand back sands and sand hopper. Left hand back sands and sand hopper. And the JSMR cab radio located in the cupboard there. So up here as well, we've got left hand injector steam valve, the water valve here down behind the driver's door. Right hand side injector steam valve, water valve here down by the cab door. This injector also works the slacker pipe there, safely tucked out the corner of the cab. Over in this corner here, we've got electric lights, two of them. Then you've got gauge glass lights and boiler pressure gauge lights and speedo lights as well. So just a quick reminder on how to start these injectors because I know people had some bother with them last year. Obviously turn the water valve on, turn the steam valve on, this you'll feel it go tight, you'll hear it start to pick up you don't have to turn it on and off. And then you turn it off, turn that, once it goes loose, it's off, and turn the water valve off. You don't have to screw this valve all the way through the front of the cab. Once it's there, that's, that valve's turned off now. And that's it, straightforward. And there's not many things you need to know about oil in this round, but one or two little peculiarities. In the top here on the bogey, all four bogey axles have a slide with a hole there for oil. They're just full of the herd of gurdy. Uh, combination name and union link. Up there is the uh, the valve guide, gland oil pot. 
something's quite easily missed. You can hear on the on the front of the crosshead. There's a whole small hole there. Working down the side of the engine, it's fairly straightforward. The only other little anomaly in there is instead of a, a worsted pad, there's a cork. That can be a bit of a pain to fill, but there is a small squeezy oil can on the engine for filling that. They're best filled in, in full back gear than this this access hatch which lifts up on the top. Moving down the rest of the engine, it's fairly straightforward. Big ends, return crank. Uh, and then you come to the tender. The tender, all the uh, all these brass pots are just normal bearing oil. The the axle box under keeps are accessed by taking these nuts off. Now these will last a while but it's best to check if it's just off washout you're best off liaising with a fitter uh, to save yourself a bit of work because they, they get 20 AD exams on all the pads it saves you a bit of a bit of time on the morning um, the last little things that are, are strange with this engine the bogey slides and the corks there just a little hole runs a pipe underneath and goes to the center pin on the on the bogey, both bogies have them just on this side, one there and one one located here. Just a couple of things to mention up here. That there's your way shaft lock. That's the actual thing you operate from the cab. This valve here is a secondary isolating valve for the atomizers. It's fed from that pipe all the way along the running board from the valve in the cab. Comes to this valve here. And then from this valve here, it runs along to the atomizer block, which is located there. That's fed from this mechanical lubricator, steam oil, mainline 800 grade, sight glass on the side, filled up in the morning. Keep an eye on it, sometimes it uh, uses quite a lot of oil this engine. Down here, under the flip up lid again, this is where you access the expansion link cork, the two oil points for the expansion link swing, and for the lifting link, bottom of the lifting link there.